Hi, this is Dakota, and Dakota works in our coolants and chemicals department, and my name's Clint. I work in service engineering and warranty. Oftentimes, customers will call us and they'll have questions relating to coolants. So we thought we would answer some of the common questions. So our customers wrote us, and we've got about seven or eight questions here that we're just gonna talk about today. And the first one is, it says, what is the function of coolant in my engine? So coolant really performs several different functions in the engine. Um, perhaps the most important is to control the temperature of the engine. So the coolant controls the temperature of not only the metallic and elastomeric components, but also the oil and the fuel. It's also important that the coolant um, prevent corrosion in the system and other things such as liner pitting or cavitation. Um, and it also prevents freezing in cold weather and boiling in extreme severe duty applications. Okay, now you said elastomeric components. What are you talking about with that? So elastomeric components would really include anything that's rubber in the system. So this could be your hoses, such as your coolant hoses, mm -hmm. or in addition to that, head gaskets um, and other seals such as filter gaskets. All right, question number two. Why are there so many different coolant types available and what is the difference in the types? So coolant types are really driven by OEM requirements. So as engines change and evolve over time, and there's also different regional biases that come into play, um, there become lots of different um, requirements. So this makes a situation in which coolant manufacturers really need to offer a diverse portfolio of products to be able to meet the needs of different makes, models, sizes, and applications of engines. So you're talking about standards. What kind of standards are out there? So this could be ASTM standards, mm -hmm. such as D3306 or D6210, which are your heavy duty and your light duty mm -hmm. standards. Or it could also be OEM standards. For example, Cummins CES 14603. Okay. Now, do you find that they vary by region or are they more national? Are, are they, is it global or is it really just contained in the United States? Um, so these OEM specifications are very global and many ASTM specifications also mm -hmm. apply in a broad variety of regions also. So they can vary globally, um, but in general, a lot of the OEMs are present in various re regions and um, countries, so they do apply normally globally. Question number three, and this has to do with all the coolants that we have in front of us, because you mm -hmm. see that we've got all, all sorts of coolants. People call us and ask us all the time, say, hey, I've got red coolant in my engine or I've got blue coolant in my engine, can I mix colors? So question number three says, does the coolant color matter and can I mix colors? So the coolant color is a purely cosmetic attribute of the product. The color is added with a dye, a very inert dye that does not impact the performance after the formulation is, is decided upon. So in general, while there are industry trends and guidelines available, many coolant manufacturers elect not to follow these. So the coolant color should not be used to make decisions on mixing or maintenance or product identification. Okay, so if you did mix them, is there any kind of general rules of thumb or percentage that you should stick to, like 50-50 yeah. or 80-20? Yes, so when mixing, um, it's really not recommended, but we understand there's applications mm -hmm. where it happens um, to prevent downtime. So when mixing, normally a mixture of 20% with another product at 80% mm -hmm. is generally okay. It's a good rule of thumb to go with up to 20% is acceptable. Okay. Beyond 20%, um, you want to think about probably draining and replacing the system yeah. to ensure that you don't impact the maintenance or the corrosion protection of okay. the product. And the next question, this is question four, it sort of it plays into the same type of question. It says, will mixing coolants, whether it's the brand or the type, cause engine damage? So no, mixing coolants in general does not cause engine damage. Again, we want to kind of lean back on that 20% rule mm -hmm. of thumb. Um, you don't want to just mix and have no control over the system or no awareness right. of what is present, but normally up to 20% is an acceptable mix. Okay. What maintenance is required with my coolant? So coolant maintenance can vary quite a bit by different products, but in general, the coolants will need to be checked with a test strip mm -hmm. or a kit that gets sent into a fluid analysis laboratory at least once a year. And that usually looks at coolant condition, could be pH, could be additive levels. Um, refractometers are also a good way to monitor the coolant on a regular basis. Yeah, right. Refractometers will give you the percent glycol and the freeze point. And then some coolants will require extenders or SCAs at the maintenance interval. 
Okay. Now you're talking a lot of technical details. You're talking mm -hmm. about refractometers. You're talking about test strips. Yeah. Where can somebody go and get these things? That's a great question. So the um, Cummins Filtration product line mm -hmm. does cover all of these products. We have radiator cleaners, refractometers, test strips, um, okay. fluid analysis programs under the Fleet Guard Monitor program. And all of that information is available at www.cumminsfiltration.com. Does the maintenance change based on the type of coolant I buy? Yes, so the coolant brand and the coolant type can significantly impact the maintenance required. If we start on the um, spectrum of conventional or universal coolants, mm -hmm. these generally will contain nitrite and they need to be tested and usually serviced at every single oil drain interval. Okay. Um, if you go to the other end of the spectrum, premium oat products such as ES Complete Oat mm -hmm. do not require SCAs or extenders and they can be used for the life of the engine without being drained or replaced under normal operating conditions. Um, and you can also envision how the different maintenance can really quickly impact the total cost of ownership mm -hmm. over the life of an engine with coolants. So does one have a benefit over the other, like the traditional versus your premium product? Yes, so when we think about um, the like ES Complete right. Oat, so it is very, very user friendly. So the product was really designed and formulated mm -hmm. to kind of take that burden off of the customer and off the user and put it on us as the coolant manufacturer. So we recommend the product be tested mm -hmm. once a year, just simply to make sure that there's no dilution happening or contamination. However, when it comes to maintenancing the product, mm -hmm. the only thing required is topping up with premix coolant. There's no SCAs, there's no extenders, again, it color, doesn't have to be changed. Color, as long as it's 20% or less, you can go ahead and top it off, right? Exactly, okay. yeah, exactly. Should I purchase an RTU premix, where RTU stands for ready to use, or should I purchase a concentrate? So we always recommend that a ready to use premix be purchased, and there's really two reasons. So premixes are formulated to contain the optimal ratio of coolant to water. So you're gonna get the best heat transfer at that optimal point. In addition to that, coolant manufacturers will really ensure that the water quality used is pure and clean water. So just because water is acceptable to drink, that really doesn't qualify it to be used in your engine coolant. If you are going to buy a concentrate and you need to dilute it with water, we always recommend deionized, demineralized, or distilled water. And where can you get that? Um, great question. So distilled water is readily available at Walmart, Kroger's, any of these grocery stores. Okay. So that seems like a really good solution. Now, suppose I'm out at the shop. Can I just grab my hose and, and top it off with my hose? It's really right not house? recommended. Really not recommended. Right. Ooh. Okay. And, and why is that? Why, why shouldn't I, I top it off with the hose I have at the house? So most tap water um, contains hardness in the form mm -hmm. of calcium and magnesium. And it could have other things as well like sulfur, but the most common calcium and magnesium. These two components can form scale on engine liners. Okay. And this scale can really insulate the liner and reduce heat transfer. They can also react with the additives in some of the more conventional mm -hmm. type coolants and can degrade the performance of those. So if you're using concentrate for a few extra dollars, just go to the store, buy some deionized water, and put it in your engine, and it's really a cheap insurance policy for your engine, right? Yeah, exactly. It, it makes it easy to use, and it does ensure that you're not going to get unintended degradation of the performance by using poor quality water. Are there other resources that I can look at to help me understand coolants better? Absolutely. Um, so I'll recommend that customers start at www.cumminsfiltration.com. And within our website, there is a whole section on coolant and chemical products. Right. If you go to that section, click on any of the products, and there's an abundance of literature there. There's training information. Um, there's product information, ordering information. Technical and specifications. Technical specifications, how to use mm -hmm. instructions. Um, there are also YouTube videos available on the Cummins Filtration channel that focus in on coolant. And there's also Fleet School. This can be found at www.fleetschool.com. Mm -hmm. It is a self-registration and it's very in-depth training where you can really go at your own pace okay. and, and go over the material as many times as you would like. Okay, so that's really good. And we're talking about some of the things that are available on the website. And I've got a couple of brochures mm -hmm. that, that I've got in my hand here about which Fleet Guard product is right for you. And yes. it's got the different whether it's ES Complete Oat or ES Complete or, or Fleet Cool, these things are all available out there, right? Yes, they are available and they're available to be ordered also. If you go to the link of order literature, mm -hmm. these um, reference sheets are available. And what does that cost? Home. 
Uh, it's free. So it's free. So yep. I can just go onto the website, I can click order, put it in my shopping cart, and you'll send this to me for free. And, and it's got all these different brochures. Yes. Okay, this is really good. Well, this is good information. I think that's all the time we have for today, but I appreciate it. So this is Dakota. My name is Clint. Thanks for joining us today to talk about Coolers. Thank you.